What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And today, we're going to talk about Disintegration from V1 and published by Private Division. As a huge fan of the old 60s shooter Forsaken and my fair share of RTS games, when I heard a game was coming out where you could float around on a gravity-defined space cycle with weapons rivet bolted to it, all the while ordering units around like Harley Davidson throne King Leonidas, just this is Spartan, every jacked up robotic enemy all the way around, I could have not been more excited. I was in moment one. Let's see if it turned out as cool as I thought it would be. Thanks to Private Division for the code, and as you guys know, whenever I get a code, even from a dev, I go out and I pre-order or buy a game and give it away to anybody who's watching. So comment, you can be one of those people that gets it. This is going to be out June 16th and available now for pre-order for 50 bucks. If you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe or maybe go out there and subscribe to somebody you haven't subscribed to yet. It is a crazy place on YouTube. They would appreciate it. So here's my review for Disintegration. Two shotguns, one hover cycle, Pez dispenser resurrection systems, and the most rewarding but slow flash to bang weapon system in a game. Graphics are up first. And while I like the designs in Disintegration enough, and most of that is probably based on the close proximity to Destiny and Halo having a love baby in some kind of seedy futuristic hotel, weapon effects and battles also don't look half bad. And when some of the many-ton robots from EDF and Star Wars Fever Dreams come lumbering towards you, that sense of weight is noticeable in the game. Rockets and missiles streak across the small battlefields and impact around enemies, sending them flying, while parts of buildings will break off as poorly aimed weapons strafe the site of some random mountain house where the enemy decided to house inside. But disintegration does itself no justice, from the bare bones levels to the bare bones bases to the bare bones world itself. If you're not being funneled down the world's most unfun two-lane canyon, like nature looked at a mountain and thought, screw it, I'm tired and made water erosion and pretty much everything else has to do with nature, just makes sense in two areas. Or you're traversing down the dark underbelly of a series of sewers that are really not a series at all, but like two parallel pipes, as if someone forgot that hot and cold water is pretty much the only thing you want to be pumped in that manner and not millions of tons of humans' half-digested meals. The design is threadbare throughout the entire game, almost all the way even to the menus themselves. Even some of the larger locations that look like they'd be interesting originally, like a farmstead. It's just a small contained map with a couple buildings thrown randomly into them. And in the case of a couple locations, they have actual no way for people to get in or out, resulting in the breaking of the fiction that's important to make locations actually feel and look lived in. Nothing feels real. Every location is really nothing more than some random boxes that look like walls and an energy shield or a door somewhere. And that's another one of the major issues here that you almost always see. Everything is either too far away or too close in combat. Imagine have a friggin' telescope duct taped to your right eye and a microscope to your left, and that's it. Like a steampunk version of a friggin' googly-eyed fish. Because some of the enemy designs are awesome, but you wouldn't actually know unless you accidentally got down close to one of them, which is actually stupid, as even the shotguns on your Gravo cycle do damage far enough away that it doesn't really make sense to wade into battle unless one of your dudes dies, which I'll get to in a second. Or you're zoomed way out, taking pot shots at dudes that basically just appear as a couple pixels as your guys run, which are another couple pixels around until some kind of flash happens, indicating someone died. And that's on the normal difficulties. On the harder difficulties, well, you have to do it a little bit faster. At least performance here isn't bad, and it really shouldn't be on console or on PC. The game isn't really doing a ton extra for all of the handful of the locations and even the multiplayer modes. There's not a lot going on. So a PC with a current or last gen i5 or i7 and a 1070 or above is going to be able to run this at close to max settings at smart resolutions. And while it doesn't have a resolution scaling setting, I can honestly say... I don't think it needs to. Disintegration doesn't look much more than a bare bones equivalent of its sibling titles in the first person shooter realm, and then looks contained and tight compared to most of its RTS cousins. I don't really know what they were shooting for, but not very good is what they ended up with. And that brings us to sound, music, and voice. You need to loosen up, man. I'm fine. Hey, I can grease my own joints. Got it. Will do. Taking them out. 
And let's do sound first. Shotguns are nice. They have this throaty and a good tail overall and some details, as do the machine guns and the sniper rifles. I like your weapons. Nevertheless, a good deal of the combat is far away when battling it out, especially with your crew. So some of that detail can be lost when it comes to their weapons. Easily the best, though, is a spool up of the rockets getting ready to rain down rocket-shaped gravestones on enemies from one of your crew. I loved hearing that wind-up. There's this Pavlov dog kind of moment that goes on. I do like it. It is a bit chaotic, but overall, not bad. That brings us to music. So the title music is awesome. It's this stirring starting. It's got violins churning up that feeling in your stomach for battle. And there's a tension there. And then it builds up with drums hitting. And then <laughs> boom, nada. It's like the first time you realize abbreviation is a super long word and the rest of the world makes no sense after that. Why drop out the music now? Why is there almost no music playing for the rest of the game? It doesn't make any sense. And sure, there are times where there's a little bit of music playing, a little bit of ambient music, and then the occasional cutscene, but it really never ends up rearing its head at any particular point and just doesn't add any emotion or feeling of action to the game. Sometimes music sits in the back seat. This one is sitting in the trunk. And that brings us to voice. This is pretty much ho-hum. They aren't dealing with the heavy writings of Socrates or even Rodriguez or Tarantino, but it's not that bad. They deliver what they need to deliver, and later on when the story actually gets good, they do a pretty good job delivering it. Most of the lines outside of the main cutscenes are short or just small diegetic lines as they trot off into some new location to murder factory build their way to a next landing pad cutscene moment. There's just not a lot really going on there. And speaking about not a lot going on there, let's talk about gameplay and a bit about the story. Let's set the scene for a second. Remember the first time you heard Thanos and his plan for the snap to kill 50% of the people in the universe to solve world hunger? Like, not snapping to create more food or a bigger universe and to make everyone, you know, less hungry wouldn't have worked? Disintegration's plot makes that plot make a lot of sense. You see, in the world of disintegration, the weather and the environment pretty much kick the crap out of us. So someone came up with the idea that instead of having the third part of the apocalypse come, which would most likely be the robot hordes, why don't we actually become one with them? And that's called integration, where human and robot become the same thing. Think of it as sort of building your own safety suit in a world that doesn't really want you there anymore. It sounds good, right? But apparently, people aren't doing it fast enough for a military group known as Rayon, who are forcing people to do it. Now, some people don't want to do that. That's the rebellion. And some people have had it forced on them, and they don't like it. And that's you. You are Romer. And you fill out a small group with some others who aren't happy about being integrated against their will. The rebellion wants to fight back and stop all this. If that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, don't worry, because it didn't to me either. It's like someone being pissed that Band-Aids are being handed out so they blow up a hospital when people are inside. Trust me. It gets better, it actually does, and despite logical leaps that are massive and required by the end, you actually can feel for some of these characters that miss the human side of their existence. So to fight back, you lead your group out in missions from your main bases. You're outfitted with a grav cycle, of which there are standard types you get later on, each with their own kinds of weapons. And of course, while you're in the first person mode, you're also able to switch between those first and secondary weapons, but you can also control troops with you. You can highlight enemies to focus everyone's fire on them, you can call them back to you or aim special weapons at enemies and light them up. Of course, all of those special attacks are cooled down, and you have to watch those counters. Each character has their own skills, like the ability to slow down enemies or launch rockets or shoot out grenades, as you also grab scrap around the world to raise levels between those battles. So as you work, this team moving through areas, taking on mission objectives, backing them up with firepower from your grav cycle and moving them around the game field, you're also having some of the story told to you. The problems with disintegration are about 12-fold. Uh, where do I begin? First, the rebel locations. Now, you need a good rebel location to make you feel like you're fighting for something, right? You need that or the characters. It's like Anthem if Anthem removed the cool cityscape and replaced it with a boring flat spaceport or a boring flat field, which I'm not saying they shouldn't since it also just slows things down in Anthem, but here it slows them down even more. The locations you actually explore and go out to are very tight, tight as hell. Almost none of them have any real exploration at all. And the exploration that they do have is simply going somewhere hitting the explore button which lights up an item then clicking it for your characters to smash in the typical kind of RTS gathering fashion you would expect with the butt of a gun and then gold will fly out. It's not just that the world is surprisingly poor looking and feeling or exploration is lean even when you try to do something special it's crazy how alike it feels to let's say destiny or something else but somehow worse 
go to a tower and hang out and click five characters to get some bounties for the next mission and it actually could be mistaken for an early early alpha of a game like that and going into the world the missions are rote most missions are killing things and if you aren't killing things you're trying to get past an energy door which has you follow a battery wire to a battery that is no lie sometimes across the small map on the other side just sitting there alone for you to blow up and kill enemies for maybe and then fly all the way back at times disintegration was built in a way that systematically discouraged me at every moment from engaging in its world with a skill that is almost unseen when it comes to games. Secondly, is the battle itself and its problems. You jet into a place and enemies are either there or drop in. Now, enemy placement is not bad at all. The reinforcements can easily flank you, which I love. You guys know me, I like that kind of thing. But overall, you're just flying around, natting enemies until the specials from your crew can be used again. On the harder difficulties, the enemies do more damage, so that can be for sure a thing, and using the world around you can be pretty cool for cover when you absolutely need it, but it just never feels satisfying. As you've seen, sometimes you're going to face off against other grav cycle pilots as well, and this should be the best part of the game, the mono e mono parts, when grav pilots face off against each other in a duel to the death, except they don't know how to fly, like at all. They smash into everything, or they sort of shift around a ton. It's like having a damned gun battle with a nearsighted baby in one of those baby walking rings as they bounce off everything. And I'm not saying baby walking ring guns wouldn't sell well as entertainment, but it's not very fun when it's interactive. This is also backed up by a super boring skills list, one of the most boring I've ever seen. Basically, you get these chips around the battlefield and they can upgrade characters. You can manually or automatically upgrade the skills, but they are so atypical. I can't see anybody not just doing automatic. In the end, you're never gonna feel like they're really upgrading characters at all. You can't tell the difference. Control and disintegration is not bad though, and you rarely ever really feel lost when it comes to where your characters are or where you are or the enemies or how to get to one or the other. The issue here is, while you may be able to get those pieces up and running and get into a battle, there are some issues when it comes to actually engaging. For example, there's an almost refined detriment that exists within disintegration when it comes to this kind of viewpoint. If you play it the way the game so subtly hints that you actually should. For example, when you're swooping around a building, shooting through it to take out an enemy, that's fun, I love that, the destruction's great, but it doesn't actually work in most places against some of the enemies. So you'll think, hey, you know what, I gotta send my guys up to him because this wall's too thick. But they also can't hit him, and you can't actually click him to activate him because maybe he's just on the other side of the wall. So you're like, what do I do? They'll just meander around. And this is the place where the game has some big issues because if you're not given direct commands or attacks to your crew, they sort of just shift and dance around your cursor, meaning if you fly around a building, your dudes are actually going to run right in front of you and fly around the building as well, consistently getting pot shot in their silly ass heads as they dope around like trustees of modern chemicals before being offed by an enemy or given the go ahead to kill that bad guy when you finally can aim at him, which can many times result in them running all the way back around the building to find the steps that were on the side you originally started on that you actually couldn't send them up in the first place. This isn't an issue in the lower difficulties other than just looking stupid, but higher difficulties show this error in spades. Additionally, enemies that are far away, a lot of times when you want your guys to attack, it'll just send them the move icon instead and you have to actually get up and close, which sort of removes some of the strategery that you would like. Yeah, I made that word up. I admit I did counter this issue with a move though that I like to call Butt First, which sounds like an amazing party app from Android, but it's not. Instead, I just flipped around and flew backwards my way around the building so my troops would stay closer on that side. Once I got to the opposite side of the building, I'd flick the cursor up to the enemy, mark them, and then fly back around. Regardless of what happens, if one of your characters dies, their head drops onto the battlefield and a timer counts down so that you can pick it up. This also makes absolutely no sense. They could have simply kept you in the area with some kind of signal degradation system, but instead you have to swoop down and grab his head so it can recreate his body for a spawn. Guys, what that means is there's no actual tactic to this. It means that you're actually forced to go and do it in this very particular time frame. There's simply no flexibility in how you would want to go about things. What if you wanted to push the battle a little bit? Now, when it comes to multiplayer, this is exactly what we played in the beta. And some like that beta in the multiplayer and the multiple classes. It's overall pretty much the same. I will report back here when it gets more filled with players, but the beta had almost zero fun for me and nothing's really changed here. Speaking of fun, that'll bring us to fun factor. <laughs> so it's sometimes fun. For a moment of fun, there are these long stretches of almost surprising boredom or frustration where boring battles lead to boring mission requirements, which then lead to boring locations where I had a somewhat fun fight for a couple moments back to boredom. 
The ideas in Disintegration are sound. The story, once it gets going, is interesting, but everything else is as throwaway as the title of the game suggests, and it feels that, just like its title indicates, this is just going to fade away. What this game needed was some fixes to the movement, some fixes to the control, more variation on not only your character, but also more fleshed out story sequences, more fleshed out locations, more fleshed out characters, and more fleshed out crew. It could have also done with a lot more weapon variety for both you and, of course, your characters, because those skills... Well, they sort of suck. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy it for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system with rent being replaced on PC with deep, deep sale. If that's the review, I give it. I'm giving this a never touch. I really don't think it's worth it. For a deep, deep sale, you could probably get it. But for me, it's a never touch. I'm not going to jump into it again. I get that the game is from the co-creator of Halo, but that's a bit like saying an astronaut is going to bake you a friggin' cake. Some skills apply, but it doesn't instantly mean success. And games that change it up I like, and sometimes they hit it off, and other times they miss. And then there are those spectacular times when they miss so badly you realize they aren't even the same goddamn playing field as everyone else. It's like showing up to a baseball game with a friggin' croquet mallet. It's hilarious if you just start golden axing people in the head, but you're probably not going to win the game. And in this title, I would say that would be the only reason you'd play it is if you want it for free. And I know you're probably a long ways back here and you're probably getting ready to leave, but stick around for a second. Or go to iTunes and Twitter and Spotify, follow me all those places, Twitch, or you could come on over to Patreon, as you guys know. It's just me by myself plugging away on here. I'm not five different people from some other website that all came together and has three different friggin' patrons. So if you guys want to jump in, feel free. If I've saved you any money or warned you away from a game, jump on in there for, uh, what is it? It's the price of a cup of coffee once a month for the entire month and you can jump into one of the coolest discords and of course help me continue to give you guys reviews that aren't too minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap peace out guys enjoy the rest of your week and regardless if you end up getting this game i hope you enjoy whatever you're playing